You are about to discover the very best ways to recall what you study and remember what you read. Using these ideas will dramatically improve your concentration, eliminate your frustration, help you get better grades, while all at the same time reducing your overall study time. Hi, I'm Matt DeMeo, and welcome to my channel, Be Smarter Faster. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now, and also hit that little bell icon to be receiving notifications every time I release a new video. I also have a free report that I think you'll like, and getting on my list is a great way for me to keep in touch with you. You'll see the link for it in the description below the video. Now, in this video, we're going to dig into the very best ways to recall what you study and remember what you read. These are powerful strategies. They're proven, time-tested, and far easier than what you're likely doing right now. A significant amount of investigation goes into everything I teach. You see, one of my core philosophies is that none of us is as smart as all of us. So when I bring you these ideas, it's never just one man's opinion. I want you to get real results and really fast. By the way, there's a companion video that goes along with this one called How to Read Faster Than Ever, Speed Reading That Works Immediately. Now, if you haven't watched it yet, you may get some good ideas from it because we get into the most common problems that people have when they're reading. You'll, you'll learn how to overcome all the things that are slowing you down. Now, before we get into any details or techniques, there is one point I want to make that I want you to consider, it should be obvious, but sometimes it seems to be overlooked. And that is, there is a significant difference between reading a book and studying a book. Now, while they're clearly both related, reading requires less time and less devotion when you compare it to studying. Studying requires a lot more effort. You'll need more focus and more concentration. Now, the main objective with reading is to gain an understanding of the new information. It's like when you read something you're interested in. If you're reading something about music or a hobby that you've got or diet and exercise. But when you study, recall is absolutely essential. When you study, you've got to be able to remember what you read. Now, depending on what you study, it may not just be to get a good grade or, or pass the course or get an A on the test. If you're in medicine or math or engineering or anything really demanding where you're going to be using what you learned on a day-to-day -day basis in your profession, you've got to be able to retain it. Now, in order to be motivated to put in the necessary effort, when you're studying, you must read with a purpose or a goal. Now, stay with me here because what I'm getting at may be different from what you're thinking. Because I'm not talking about a goal like, oh, I want to pass the course or I want to get an A or something like that. No. Those of you who have watched my other videos know that I often like to illustrate my points with a demonstration. So, don't write this down. Just kind of play along at home and listen and see what happens. All right. When I first moved back to the United States, after having lived on the Caribbean island of Trinidad for a few years, I no longer had a United States driver's license. So for a while, I took the bus everywhere. Now, if you've ever taken a bus, you know what that's like. So let's say you're a bus driver, and you start off at the station, and you've got an empty bus, and at the first stop, five people get on. At the next stop, Two people get off and three people get on. At the next stop, two people get off, nobody gets on. At the next stop, four more people get on the bus, one old lady gets off the bus. At the next stop, three people get on and one guy with a bicycle is struggling to put it on the, the front rack of the bus. And at the last stop, you get to the station, everybody gets off the bus. Now, here are two questions I've got for you. Number one, how old is the bus driver? <laughs> now, 
And number two, how many stops did the bus make? Now, if all of a sudden you're rolling your eyes, I got you. You see, you didn't really know what I was doing when I was asking you the story. You see, it's a demonstration of the way you need to be able to study. Here are the answers to how old is the bus driver, and I'm gonna let you go and rewind the video to see how many stops the bus made. But the bus driver, in my case, would be 68 years old. In your case, it would be whatever your age is. You see, all the time I said, let's say you're a bus driver and you're starting out at the station and you pick up this many and you let off that many, and you are the bus driver. How many stops did the bus make? Well, you weren't really listening to that, nor were you paying attention to how old the bus driver was. You see, the same thing is true when you study. So how do you set your brain to be prepared? for when you're gonna study. How do you know what information it is that the author or that the professor is seeking from you when you study? And the answer begins with the idea of previewing the information. You see, you don't wanna just take it all in as brand new stuff. You wanna do like what the movies do. They give you previews of coming attractions. So you wanna do preview, content, and then review. By the way, in that companion video I mentioned earlier about how to read faster than ever, one of the points that I make is that you need to adjust your reading techniques depending on what you're reading. Now, I used some of these same books as examples. With a novel, like the one my friend DJ Kelly wrote in Perfect Heroes, you may want to just read it for the pleasure of it. However, if you're going to be writing a report on it, you're going to need to apply some of the steps we're going to cover next. I think the main reason that you're watching this video is to be able to recall and retain what you read in books where you're going to be using the information on a daily basis. So for example, I used the example of my book, How to Remember People's Names, or the other book, Start Ugly, by my friend Chris Kremitzos. These are business-related books that you're going to be using the information on a daily basis. Probably the biggest reason that you're watching this video is you want to be able to recall and retain information that you read in textbooks. And there's a lot more details in here than there are in the business books that I just showed you a moment ago. Now, reading a textbook is not like reading a novel. You see, most people make the mistake of with their textbook of starting on uh, page one of the first chapter they're going to read and then plowing straight through while they're underlining or they're highlighting or they may even take some notes. And I got to tell you, that is a terrible way to do it. Ask yourself what's better, going through the material one time with a clear systematic plan and being able to retain and recall the information or having to read the chapter, remember very little, and then you need to reread it over and over. That's a big time waster. Ultimately, even though the strategies I'm gonna cover here may appear to be slower than the way you're doing it now, in the long run, it will be much, much faster. In fact, it won't even be close. So before you begin to actually read the information, you wanna get yourself prepared. So the first thing, is you want to have good light. You don't want to suffer from eye fatigue. You also want to be comfortable. You don't want to be fiddling with your clothes or too hot or too cold. You want to listen to the right music. And yes, I get into that in the other companion video, but you don't want to be listening to stuff where that's going to distract you that you're going to be singing along. In the other video, I talk about what's even better. And you also want to have all of your note-taking stuff collected so that you're not interrupting yourself and searching all over for it later. Most importantly, you want to eliminate all of your distractions. You don't want to be sitting near that cute guy or girl that you've been crushing on or looking out the window wishing you were outside, I don't know, doing a picnic, throwing a frisbee, playing sports. Turn the TV off. Also. Put away your phone, I know that may be painful for some of you. Put away your iPad or whatever else, other technology that you're dealing with, and eliminate 
all of the things that are going to take away from your ability to focus. Now, I have a series called Instant Concentration, how to focus your mind in a world of information overload. And one of the key points that I make there is you need to do what you're doing while you're doing it. You see, you can do more than one thing at a time. You know about multitasking. Well, you can do more than one thing at a time. The problem is you cannot do more than one thing at a time well. Okay, so when you're looking to study from business books, first you want to read the front covers and then the back covers. And you'll gain a lot of information in terms of a summary, what other people have had to say about the book. Then, the next thing that you want to do is to read the table of contents. So go through the table of contents and you're going to do that with each book. Now, some books have a foreword. If it does, then you're going to want to read that and often the foreword is written by other people. For example, this one has been written by my friend Gabe. So the foreword gives you another person's interpretation of some of the things that are going to be in the book. Then you're going to start to begin to read each chapter. Now some books are going to have illustrations. Now in a business book like this that's a parable or self-improvement, it's not unusual to have the chapters be very, very short. Whereas in a book like this, what you want to do is you want to take a look and you're going to read whatever is in bold print. So, here's why this story is important to you. Here's what you're about to learn is fun. The three causes of forgettery and so on. You want to read whatever is in bold print. Then you're going to read the chapter itself. All right, now let's talk about how textbooks are different than novels and business books like we've talked about before. Remember, different types of books are going to require slightly different techniques. The first thing that you'll notice is how much more dense the text is. So the very first thing that you want to do before you start to do any of the reading is you need to prepare your mind. Remember the bus driver example we used earlier where you didn't really know what I was going to ask at the end of giving you all that information? Well, the best thing to do is to find out what information the author thinks you're supposed to get out of the chapter. And the best way to do that is to go to the end of the chapter and see if there is a review or a quiz. Not every textbook has one, but if yours does, this is a tremendous advantage. Read these questions first. Now you'll know what you're looking for as you kind of set your radar. If your textbook doesn't have a quiz at the end, simply skip that step. Next, you want to flip and go through each page in your book. You're not going to read any of this. You simply want to take a look at the illustrations, take a look at what's on each page, kind of give yourself an overview of the content. Then you're going to go back to the beginning and this time you're going to begin to read a little bit. You're going to read everything that's in headlines and in bold text. So here we've got aquatic biodiversity, core case study. Why should we care about coral reefs? You've got an illustration, key questions and concepts. All right, what is the general nature of aquatic systems? Most of the earth is covered with water. So no in-depth reading, simply read what is in bold text. Then you're going to go back to the beginning of the chapter again. This time you want to get a preview and a review. So the first paragraph or two, most authors will give you a preview about what they're going to cover in the chapter. Then you go to the end of the chapter and read the last couple of paragraphs and typically the author will give you a review of everything that was covered in the chapter itself. Now we're going to have a little bit more detail in our reading. We're going to go back to the beginning of the chapter again and this time you're simply going to read the first and last sentence in each paragraph. Paragraph by paragraph, simply the first and last sentence. 
that gives you a preview and a review of what the paragraph is all about. Once you've done that, you've been through each of the pages, you've been through the chapters, now you're going to actually read in depth, word by word, and the goal is to be able to go through the chapter one time and absorb it. And you'll understand what the next step is in just a moment. Now the process we just went through may sound like a lot of work, but the truth is, ultimately, it is far faster than what you're doing now. You see, when you've got brand new information, it bounces off your brain. You need it to sink in. You know the expression, you know, it hasn't sunk in yet. So when you do it the way I just described, you've given yourself so many previews of the information that when it's actually time to read it, it's no longer brand new. Your, your brain, your mind will have been processing some of the information and that really does help it sink in. Now what I do recommend that you do while you're reading is also going to be different than probably what other people have told you to do or what you're used to doing now. You do not want to highlight or underline. That's a complete waste of time. Look, I could teach a chimpanzee to sit there and underline or highlight. They're not going to understand the information any better. You see, that is passive. You need to be active if you're going to retain the information. Now, first of all, just the very act of taking written notes will help embed the information much more deeply into your brain. This is called multi-sensory perception. You've heard of ESP, well this is MSP, multiple senses to perceive the world around you. Quite simply put, the more senses you use when you're learning something brand new, the better it'll stay in your head because more neural connections are being made. So watch what happens when you're writing. All right, so when you're reading the information in the book, the information comes in through your eye. And then when you take notes, it goes out through your hand. Interesting way of thinking about it. But you're now gonna move your hand in a series of lines and squiggles and create the ideas. Now, once it's on the paper, the information is gonna come back in through your eyes again. So you've got an information flow in through your eyes, out through your hand, back in through your eyes. Now, this is going to sound a little bit weird, but if you're in a quiet place, it is perfectly okay, matter of fact, it may be a good idea, to actually talk to yourself a little bit as you're going through this, so that you can hear yourself as you're taking notes. Now, by the way, regarding notes, you've probably heard of mind mapping, some of you have heard of Cornell notes, those are great systems, but they're especially good for lectures. If you want to be able to take notes for textbooks, here's the best way to do it. With a textbook or a business book, you want to create your own flashcards. Sure, you've heard of flashcards, probably you've been using them since you were a little kid. So here's how to do it. So all right, I'm going to use my book on remembering people's names. Now, here, you're looking for the big, broad concept on remembering names. So one of the things that I wrote down is that there are four ways to make images with a person's name. Now, here are the four ways that you know somebody with the name, that you can rhyme the name, that the name is already a thing, or that the name sounds like something else. Now, here is the other business book we talked about, Start Ugly. Now, most of it is a parable. It's telling you a story. However, at the end, there are action steps. Now, if you want these action steps to go into your head, here they are here, now you're gonna take a, create a flashcard. So, here is the flashcard that I created. So, what is the seven step Start Ugly system? And it is these steps identify, research, create the thing, commit to a launch date, start, set your check-in dates, and create the system. 
So that makes it relatively easy. You're going to create a small deck of cards for the business books or self-improvement books where you want the information to really stay in your head. Now let's take a look how we're going to do it with textbooks. So doing the flashcards on your textbook is going to be more detailed than what we did with the business books. So over here you'll notice the basic concept uh, they're going to talk about, okay, key factors to determining biodiversity in aquatic systems. And now they're going to give you the list of what they are. So if you want to put that information into your head, if that's important, now your flashcard is going to look like this. Key factors in aquatic biodiversity. And what are those four key factors? Here they are. Temperature, dissolved O2 content, food, light, and nutrients for photosynthesis. Now, as you're continuing down, you're going to take a look over here. Now, that's a, a general concept. Now, we're going to look at specific things. Salt water covers about 71% of the Earth's surface, and fresh water occupies roughly another 2.2%. So, if you're studying something where you know the percentages or statistics or numerical information is going to be important, and you want that in your head, you create a flashcard percentage of salt water versus fresh, and the answer is 71% salt, 2.2% fresh. Now the process we've just described may sound like a lot of work, but the truth is ultimately it is far faster than what you're doing now. Like I said earlier, information that is totally new to you bounces off your brain and you want it to sink in. So once your flashcards are created, you want to quiz yourself using spaced repetition. You may have heard the term rote learning. That's blind repetition. You know, you repeat something over and over again and hope that it sticks, kind of a, like throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing how much sticks. That is weak, it's ineffective, and in truth, the information just won't stay in your head very long. Whereas, with spaced repetition, that causes much deeper neural connections so that the information lasts in your head for a long time. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the deck of flashcards with you and you're going to quiz yourself in odd little moments while you're, while you're waiting in line, while you're waiting for that ride chair to show up or whatever. So you have the ability to be able to make use of time that would be otherwise completely wasted. Well, we've covered a lot, so let's review. Before you begin, you want to get prepared. Eliminate the distractions, have all your stuff, be comfortable, don't self-sabotage, because if you're being passive-aggressive and you just are resisting studying, it's not unusual to put roadblocks in your own way, and probably you can recognize when you're doing it to yourself. Now, you also want to give yourself multiple previews of all of the coming attractions. Uh, remember, as we talked about before, stuff that's completely new to you bounces off your brain. You want it to sink in. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is by multiple previews so that it's getting in there a little at a time. Again, you want to be active, not passive. And the best way to do that is to use multiple senses. We talked about the idea of the information going in through your eyes and out through your hands, and if you talk to yourself, you can hear it as well. So when you're taking these written notes, you're getting that flow of information going. Now, the best kind of written notes to take when you're dealing with a textbook is your flashcards. Now, you want to review those flashcards whenever you can. Use those little moments in your day when your time might otherwise be wasted using spaced repetition combined with multi-sensory perception will create much stronger neural pathways than any other methods you can use. If you feel that this video has helped you, please be sure to give it a like and drop me a comment. I often reply, so don't be surprised if you hear from me. As always, this is Matt DeMeo reminding you that everything that I teach does take a little bit of work and effort, but it is absolutely worth it. Always remember that the fastest way to get to the top is to get off your bottom. Thanks for joining me. 
We'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.